Welcome to Proven Improbable, where we deliver mining insights and bullion sales in the form of physical delivery, offshore depositories, and private blockchain distributed ledger technology. Joining us for a conversation is the 2019 Murray Pesman Award winner and one of Rick Rule's hand-picked investment executives. I'm speaking of none other than Steve Toderick of Sprott USA. Welcome to the show, sir. Hi, Maurice. How are you doing? Good afternoon. <laughs> Glad to have you back on the program to discuss the current state of the natural resource base, along with new quality discoveries that have your attention at the moment. Full disclosure, today's conversation is for educational purposes only and is not investment advice. Before we begin, sir, your body of work spans more than 40 years and counting. Provide us with a little background on your work and your investment thesis, which has made you one of the most trusted names slash brokers in the natural resource base. Well, I'm from Vancouver, Canada. I went to university there studying geology, how to look for gold deposits for five years. And uh, upon graduating, worked in the field for a number of mining companies, big and small. And then I think after about 15 years, I transitioned into running my own junior mining companies as the president of two companies for about 12 years. And then one day in 2003, Rick Rule asked me if I'd consider leaving that job and move down to sunny California and become a stockbroker helping to pick gold mining stocks for our clients. And I said, that sounds a, like a pretty neat sideways career change. So I did it and I've been doing that for the last 16 years. <laughs> well, that's not a, a bad transition at all. Now that we got some background on you, let's find out which sectors in the natural resource space have your attention and why. Well, I, I like to think I've got a pretty refined niche within the mining industry. There's a saying, the most exciting thing in the mining industry is if a little exploration company discovers a brand new deposit, whether that's gold, silver, copper, uranium, nickel, zinc, um, if a little company can do that and then uh, successfully keep moving the drill over, grow it into a big deposit that's good quality, um, you usually will see a big mining company come along and, and take them over and then the big company builds it into a mine for their shareholders. So as an investor, I want to get into that uh, exploration company as early as I can, as low a share price as I can, right after the uh, discovery announcement. Um, fortunately, you know, we've got you know, 10 to maybe 15 good-looking discoveries going on right now around the world that uh, my clients are, are involved in getting good exposure there. So uh, pretty fun time right now. You know, speaking of that process of when you've identified a stock as a buy opportunity, once you commit to that, it's more than just a one-time buy. I think you've you somewhat alluded to it is that there's also the arbitrage opportunity when that mining company buys them out. But within that process, there's a couple of times when you can make some some multi baggers. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. The the bigger the the deposit, um, you know, the more valuable the asset. You should see the the market cap and therefore the share price go up a lot higher than if a company just makes a nice, you know, good looking average discovery. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so uh, again, the bigger it is, the more valuable it is, the higher the share price could go. And that, that hopefully results in that, that 10 bagger, the big home run that we're always trying to, you know, identify and participate in. And, and may I ask you this as well, because this is a question I'm sure someone listening wants to find mm -hmm. out when you're looking at these projects, give us the scale. What, what type of, tonnage are you looking for what kind of grade are you looking for well most people are most comfortable with with gold gold equivalent things like that so i always say if a little company drills that that first good discovery drill hole um i'm hoping and betting and holding my breath that they can grow it into at least a one million ounce gold deposit to justify building a, a brand new standalone expensive mining operation so you know whether it's silver copper zinc you know most metals You'd, you'd want to have it at least being a million ounces in size, ideally a lot bigger than that, you know, 3 million ounces, 5 million ounces, 10 million ounces. Uh, but that's, that's the first thing. If you can go from zero to a million ounces, you're probably going to do okay. Are there any commodities that you believe speculators are overbuying right now? Uh, well, I, I would have to say gold is the craziest thing out there right now. It's got all the attention for all the obvious reasons. Um, I still think it's got a long way to go. I wouldn't say that it's overvalued. I think there's a pretty good line of reasoning that the big gold mining companies um, are not yet trading at, at their all-time highs of 10 years ago. Um, so I think, I think we've got a long ways to go. 
Are there any geographical locations that one should consider or are they overlooking in your opinion? Well, again, it, it, you know, for, for what I'm trying to do, um, if I, if I want to see, you know, my little company get taken over by a big company, it's got to be in a jurisdiction where the big company's comfortable. So, uh, most of the major mining companies are trying to lower their risk profile, i.e. lower their, their country risk. So if you can have discoveries in, in lower risk countries like Canada, uh, certain parts of the U.S., definitely Australia, uh, some countries in South America, Mexico is pretty good. Uh, but you, you, you want to, you know, for what I'm trying to do, uh, I, I don't want to get involved in, in juniors that make discoveries, say, in the Congo, you know, or, or some really high risk country. Um, you know, Greece, Turkey, things like that. So try and, fo- try and focus on uh, low-risk countries would be the, the best advice. You sleep a lot better, too. <laughs> yeah, you you know, rather, than waking up, <laughs> rather than waking up in the morning, like in, in Mali here a couple of months ago, you know, they got a coup. You know, you, you don't sleep good with that kind of stuff. No, you certainly don't. You referenced Australia. That is a location <clears throat> I think many of us here in the United States in particular, companies that have projects, they're overlooked. And I understand for compliance reasons, you can't provide us with any names. But leaving company names out of the discussion, do you have any examples for us coming out of Australia? Yeah, it's it's almost like what's up with Western Australia, not just all of Australia. But um, right now, there's there's four good-looking discoveries that, that I'm involved in. And we just had the newest one announced two or three weeks ago. And it's like, what's up with Western Australia? Well, again... Uh, companies that are, are trying to raise money, you know, they got a better chance of raising money if they're in a low risk country. So Australia fits that their own backyard, but Western Australia is, uh, you know, a lot of sand covered desert. It's hotter than heck. It's quite remote. <clears throat> so it's basically to a pretty good extent been overlooked and underexplored, you know, over the, the decades type of thing. And, and uh, the Australian companies are, are deciding, let's go out there, let's raise money, and let's put up with the heat and the remote, and get out there and see what we can do. And, uh, you know, like I said, the, the big thing is a lot of the rock out there is covered with, you know, up to 400 feet of sand and, and you know, soft rock type of thing. Fortunately, today we've got geophysical surveys that can see through that rock and that sand, identifying anomalies. And then the companies go out and they try and dress up those anomalies with more detailed geophysics or whatever else science they can throw at it, you know, to, to dress that target up as, as best they can so they can then select or prioritize uh, the, the targets they want to come in and drill test. And it's like in the last two years, we've had, you know, like I said, four juniors I'm involved in. One of them is, is up somewhere between 15 and 20 times from when we first started getting into it two years ago. But along with those those two juniors, um, we've had uh, Rio Tinto uh, make a brand new copper discovery out in this area. BHP's made a, a new Olympic Dam type of discovery within the last year to year and a half. Um, you know, so there's six discoveries. You know, and it's just in Western Australia where it's been underexplored type of thing. Companies are working the rest of Australia as well, but they're not having the, the success. Uh, those other areas are easier to get to. They're more mature. You get more outcrop type of thing, um, so I love it. You know, I'm, I'm absolutely uh, loving Australia right now. You know, speaking of jurisdictions and somewhat geopolitics, you somewhat touched on it here. Are there any arbitrage opportunities that speculators can take advantage of if a said currency exchange rate makes a drastic move relative to one another? I don't really factor that in. Again, for the, the discovery plays I'm trying to get in, you know, I'm hoping for at least a double or a triple. I want the odd home run, like I just referred to. Mm-hmm. You know, if you make 10 or 15 or 20 times on your money, whatever the currency is going to move is going to be insignificant as far as I'm concerned. I do have a few clients to bring it up and ask about it, but, it, you know, that might be, you know, maybe you're going to choose between big Australian gold mining companies or big American mining companies or big Canadian you know, if they're all quite similar, you might, you know, place a bet, okay, well, I think the Australian dollar is going to perform stronger than the U.S. dollar, therefore, I'm going to buy Australian gold mining companies. You know, but that's, as far as I'm concerned, that's not even a consideration. Well, I'm glad you addressed that, because that's a question I, I receive frequently on my end here. And by the way, just full disclosure, at uh, Sprott USA, you're a full-service broker there, but I, if I'm a client, can you just answer this for me? Do I have the ability to purchase a ASX listed company or do I have to purchase the OTC? 
no, we absolutely you always want to buy the stock in, in the most liquid market. That's usually the, the, the home market for the company. So we buy our shares directly in Australia. I, I wouldn't be caught dead buying um, shares on the OTC type thing. Again, depends if you're just going to buy, you know, a couple thousand shares in your individual. Well, yeah, okay, that's fine. But, you know, if you're looking to buy millions or millions and millions of shares, you want to go to the most liquid market. I'm glad you shared that with us because, again, another question I receive frequently, and I'm sure you do as well, is I'm being told by my current broker that, hey, this OTC is the U.S. equivalent, and it's exactly the same. And in your experience, the liquidity isn't there, but also the the spread between the bid and the ask is actually you're owning a derivative of the stock. Am I correct in that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just talking to the Australians, I I can tell you for sure, uh, if we buy an Australian stock, in Australia, we have to charge our clients eighty dollars for that uh, commission. Um, up in Canada, I've got friends that are trying to buy the same stock through their brokerage firm, and the Canadian brokerage firms are trading up to two hundred, are charging up to two hundred and fifty dollars commission for that same trade. Mm. And then I just had another friend in Canada tell me that a different brokerage firm is charging him twenty dollars a month while he holds Australian stocks. So <laughs> the brokerage firms are. You know, it's it's definitely harder uh, to buy them. It's you know, most of the North American brokerage firms aren't buying a lot of the Australian stocks, so it's a bit of a pain or a nuisance for them. So they're going to charge you a pound of flesh for them. You know, for someone like us, that if we're buying a lot of the Australian uh, stocks, we can work out different deals and rates. And, you know, get a bit get a bit of a better deal for our clients. But again, in the big picture, if I'm looking to double, triple, or you know, trying to hit a home run on a junior, I'm not the slightest bit worried about whether I'm paying eighty dollars or two hundred and fifty dollars in commission. Absolutely not. But uh, again, I, I eat, don't miss the opportunity because you're trying to save a few dollars. <laughs> well said. All right, before we close, sir, what keeps you up at night that we don't know about? Oh, definitely ice hockey. You know, are we going to get ice hockey resuming in January first? And how's my <laughs> team, Chicago, going to do? Everything else is on cruise control pretty well. What did I forget to ask? Ooh, I, I, I think you covered all the bases. Sir, in the past, you've been generous in ranking our subscribers' natural resource portfolio at no cost and no obligation. Is this invitation still open? Yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll give comments. Rather than rank your stocks, I'll, I'll try and uh, give comments and, and just a little bit of an observation. I've been doing quite a bit of this the last four or five months. And uh, it's alarming how often and my comment is, don't know your stock. That's not a good thing. No, it's not. So try, and, <laughs> try and do something to somehow find and invest in the, the best or the really good you know, junior mining exploration companies. If you're going to go down that far in the ladder, you want to know what you're invested in. And it's, it's very alarming how many comments I'm making that are, I don't know your company. Mr. Toderick, for someone listening that wants to further today's, today's discussion with you, Please share the contact details. Um, email your, your stocks to me at stoderick at sprockglobal.com. Uh, I think you'll be posting that name just so that I don't have to get a misspelled. No, I'll take care of that for you, sir. <laughs> okay. All right. In one email, Mr. Toderick, please make sure you put in the subject line, proven and probable, to help streamline the emails. Mr. Toderick, it's been a pleasure speaking with you today. Wishing you the absolute best, sir. The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.